Welcome to another edition of our Beat Diabetes Books and Quotes series, and today we're going to be talking about a book by Mark Hyman, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman. He is an MD, and he is kind of a celebrity doctor. Here's the book. It's called The Blood Sugar Solution, and uh, I've got actually two of his books. I've also got this Eat, Fat, Get Thin, which we'll look at more in detail in another program. But it's interesting. This one is about fixing blood sugar. This one is about losing weight. But I like the one about eating fat and getting thin, losing weight much better than this one. Uh, this is supposed to fix your blood sugar. I knew there was going to be a problem when I started reading some of the endorsements at the beginning of the book. And the very first endorsement of this book is by none other than former President Bill Clinton, who says in the last decade, the rate rise of obesity and diabetes has emerged as a crisis, etc., etc. Uh, I hope Dr. Hyman's new book will inspire you as it has me. Well, Bill Clinton, last I heard, was a vegan. Uh, he became a vegan after he had some heart issues. And so I'm like, okay, if a vegan is promoting and endorsing this book, uh, I'm probably not going to like it too much. Not that I've got anything against vegans personally, but their philosophy of how you beat diabetes is almost exactly opposite of uh, the people that I respect. And then there's another endorsement by a guy named Dean Ornish, who's known for his very, very low-fat diet. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he is uh, vegetarian or at least extremely low fat. And he promotes the book and says, uh, the good news is diabetes is completely preventable. Well, or even reversible for most people. I uh, would agree with that. He says, Dr. Mark Hyman shows you how. So I'm like, okay, he's being promoted and endorsed by Dean Ornish and Bill Clinton. And then one other endorsement. This is by Arianna Huffington, and she talks about how that this book uh, deals with the root social causes of obesity and diabetes. And I'm like, the root social causes? When diabetes came rushing at my life, the last thing in the world I cared about was the root social causes of diabetes. I just wanted to fix it. I didn't care about the root social causes. To me, it wasn't a social issue at all. It was a personal issue connected with me, and I had to find some answers. So, you know, as soon as I read those endorsements, and there's some other ones by other people that are okay, but I thought, I'm not at all sure. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I won't like this book. Anyway, uh, as I've looked through the book, and I, I have to be honest, I didn't read it word for word, paragraph by paragraph. I, I looked through it pretty thoroughly and uh, picked out a few things that I liked or disliked. Uh, so let's just go through a few of them quickly. Uh, one of the things, he, he has a little questionnaire that's supposed to help you understand if you are either diabetic or you're headed toward diabetes. He, he asked different questions, and two of them I like. Two questions I like. One, he says, do you have extra belly fat? And, of course, if you do, uh, you are much more likely to have diabetes. I think everybody agrees on that. So that, that was a reasonable question to ask. And then secondly, he says, do you have sugar and refined carbohydrate cravings? So he is strongly inferring that sugar and refined carbs are a problem. And I would agree with that, but I would go a step further and say not only are refined carbs a problem, but if you've crossed the border of diabetes and you're well into the land of diabetes, you may well find and probably will that it's not just refined carbs, it's carbs of almost any kind, except for the very low, car uh, low carb uh, carbs, uh, foods such as broccoli and cauliflower and garden salads, cob salads, and so forth. Those we can handle. But almost any other, like brown rice, like quinoa, and so forth, uh, we have a problem with. All right. Well, he gives in this book what he calls the real causes of disease. Sounds sort of like Dr. Ben Bickman, right? The real causes. But his real causes are a little different. So he says... In addition to having uh, single gene disorders, he says there are just five causes of all disease, probably a little simplistic, but he says poor diet, and of course that can mean anything. So when someone says poor diet is a problem, 
I could say, yep, you're definitely right about that. But can we define what a poor diet is? You got to read the rest of the book. Uh, but his idea of a poor diet and mine are different. He says chronic stress. Well, stress is a problem. But you know what? When I was looking for answers to diabetes, I never even thought much about stress. Didn't hear about it. Didn't think about it. Didn't worry about it. I've had level uh, times in my life where I was under severe stress. I've had a lot of times where I wasn't under too much stress. But one thing I find is that when I eat high carb, it doesn't matter how much stress I'm under. I, <laughs> my blood sugar is going to go up. I can be the most peaceful guy in the world. And I've just finished reading the Psalms and I'm feeling so peaceful. But if I eat a high carb meal, my blood sugar is going to go up whether I feel peaceful or not. And I know that stress can, have, can be a factor. I'm not saying it cannot. But I am saying that's not really your big foe. So poor diet, chronic stress, microbes. It's another thing that I never even thought about, never worried about. It's like, oh, I bet you I've got some bad microbes running around in me somewhere. How can I identify those microbes? How can I get rid of them? Um, toxins, again, it kind of goes back to the, the gal that said he's helping us find the root causes. There's toxins in the world. Well, guess what? Dennis Pollock is too little of a fella to do much about all the toxins in our world or in our country or in my little community where I live. I can't deal with the toxins, but I can sure deal with the carbs and the fact that the more carbs I eat, the higher my blood sugar goes. So when he talks about this kind of stuff, it's like, well, maybe, but you're kind of missing the point here, Dr. Mark Hyman. And then allergens. Well, a lot of people do have allergens. But you know what I find is when you get people to do intermittent fasting and low carb eating, it hardly matters what they're allergic to or not. Now, obviously, if you're allergic to something, here's a simple answer. Don't eat it. <laughs> if you're allergic to peanuts, don't eat peanuts. And if you're allergic to ham McDonald's hamburgers, don't eat McDonald's hamburgers, obviously. But again, for the average Joe, and, and when I read this book, I, I just keep thinking about average people because this book really isn't going to impress average people much. Uh, philosophers and, and nutritionists and people that are deep, deep, deep into nutrition and, and they're real foodies and they, they're always interested in what foods, how foods affect us. Um, they might get something out of it, but the average Joe, the average truck driver, the average school teacher, the average Walmart worker, uh, the average preacher, the average anybody uh, probably isn't going to be overwhelmed by this book and, and helped all that much. Uh, and, and at one point, <laughs> he, he lists goals. One of the problems with this book, it's a very thick book and he's got a lot in it. And a lot of it's not even necessary. It's, it's just like irrelevant. It's, it's like, Mark, you're taking on too much. <laughs> Methinks thou protest too much. He says, my psychological and social goals. And he talks about what are psychological goals. Who cares what your psychological goals are? But he says it should be emotional health. Well, I'm all for that. But somehow, to me, that's not much of an issue with diabetes. Relationships. I've got to heal my relationships. Work. Uh, what is my relationship to my work? And he just gets into stuff that's like irrelevant to beating diabetes. You don't need all this. If you want to be a better person, according to Dr. Mark Hyman, then work on your relationships. And as a Christian, I believe in good relationships. The Bible emphasizes that. But if I'm trying to help somebody beat diabetes, I'm not going to say much about relationships. Uh, and then he says, meaning and purpose, spiritual goals, what is important to me, what would I want to be my epitaph, and so forth. Again, what is that doing in a book about beating blood sugar? I mean, I'm a simple guy, and I like my my uh, my idea is if I'm going to start at point A and get to point B, I'm going to I'm going to take the most direct route that I can take. So, talking about your social goals, your spiritual goals, and um, then another one of his. Uh, uh, goals is getting to what's important now. What is the someday I hope to do thoughts that I can make happen now? In other words, you've got dreams. Why don't you make them now? What's that doing in a diabetes book, a blood sugar book? Mark just, you know, you could help a person beat diabetes with a little small pamphlet or a tiny thin little book that could just give him point A, point B, point C, point D. And he's just meandering all over the all over the map with all kinds of stuff. 
And uh, it, it's just not real impressive. Now, here's one thing he says I do like pretty much. He says, uh, at the end of the day, controlling the glycemic load of your meals is not very hard. You need to combine protein, fats, and whole food, fiber-rich, low-starch carbohydrates from vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds, and a limited amount of whole grains. All right, the whole grains you could do without. The legumes, the beans, and he's big on beans. Uh, you don't need, and especially if you're up there at a 12, 13, 14, or even 8, 9, 10, A1C, you just need to forget about the beans and forget about the whole grains and just go for the jugular of diabetes and kill that sucker and quit worrying about, uh, I want to make sure and get my whole grains. Now, maybe later you can indulge in some. Uh, I don't. I just, about the only kind of bread I'll eat is a, a keto kind of a bread. But anyway, uh, again, just just problematics. It, you know, as much as Mark Hyman sometimes gets interviewed by low-carb people, but it sort of gives you the idea, at least at this point in his life, and this was written in 2012, so this is, you know, quite some time ago. At this point in his life, he didn't really see the whole picture very well of beating diabetes. He was more of a nutritionist. It's like, I want to get you the most nutrition possible. And then here's another example of him meandering all over the place. He says, think about joining your local food co-op. <laughs> when diabetes was coming after me and someone had said, well, Dennis, your problem is you need to join your local food co-op. No, I didn't. I needed to go to Walmart and buy a, several pounds of hamburger and buy some salad and buy some, some chicken and buy some broccoli and cauliflower and low-carb veggies. I didn't need to join a local food co-op. And then he says, join a community-supported agricultural program. Why in the world would anybody care whether you're part of a, a community-supported agricultural program? That may be a nice thing to do for some. But if here's a guy who's literally dying of diabetes. It's about to take him out. It's about to cause him to lose his legs, have his kidneys fail. His whole life is about to be turned upside down and probably ended way too soon. And you're telling him to, to join a community-supported agricultural program? Just go to Walmart and buy the right foods and avoid the wrong ones. And uh, it, it goes on and on. Uh, he talks about diet, or excuse me, he gives uh, plans for various uh, meals and recipes. And some of the stuff he recommends, uh, he's, uh, I just... I just don't see it, at least for someone who's got any kind of serious blood sugar problems. He, here's a, a recipe for poached pears and cashew cream. Uh, I'd never eat that. Here's one for quinoa avocado sal salad with black beans. Well, quinoa is as high in carbs as rice is. It'll raise your blood sugar as much. Benedict and I did a, a video about that. We tried quinoa versus rice. We liked quinoa. It tastes good. But boy, I tell you what, it is not. Uh, friendly to your blood sugar. It is the darling of all the people that are into super nutrition. The only problem is it's terrible for your blood sugar. So, uh, and he gives just one, one thing after another. Here's one on tofu fried rice. So it, he uses a lot of brown rice and some tofu apparently. Uh, again, no diabetic should be eating that kind of stuff. Uh, like I said, it's a big book. It, he, he takes on way too much. He covers too much ground and he doesn't get to the heart of the matter. And he misses some points that the number one thing any diabetic can do is severely slash your carbs. Let me just close this uh, video with this little illustration. I know the McKinney Dallas area pretty well. I've lived around that area for a long time. And if I was in McKinney, Texas, and I wanted to go to Dallas, but I didn't have a clue how you get there. And I asked somebody and he said, well, you, you turn left here, you turn right, you turn left, you turn right, you get on this overpass, you get off, you turn on, you get off. He gives me like 65 directions to get to Dallas. He says, if you follow these directions exactly, you'll get there. I'm like, yeah, I guess maybe I would, but isn't there a simpler way? And then another guy comes up and says, you don't have to do all that. Hop on Highway 75, I-75, and drive straight south, and you will end up in Dallas. I go, oh, okay, that sounds a lot better to me. 
than somebody giving me 60, 70, 80, 100 different directions of left, right, here, there. Just hop on the highway and go straight for Dallas. And I'll be there in 25 minutes. And to me, it's like, this is the 75 to 100 different directions. And even taking all these probably wouldn't get you to beat diabetes entirely. It would help if you're on a standard diet and you're just eating junk and lots of sugar and white flour and stuff, then this would definitely help. So I'm not saying it has no value at all. It's just not the highway approach to beating diabetes. It's the turn here, turn there, turn here, turn there approach. Now, he wrote this book four years later. This was 2012. I think this was 2016. I like this a lot better. I, I suspect, I can't prove it, but I suspect he's learned, he learned quite a bit in the four years between the blood sugar solution and the eat fat, get thin book. And uh, there's a lot more in this one I like, and uh, I'll be sharing with, uh, with you on that in a future video. But my friend, if you've got serious diabetes, don't take all those little directions and worry about, I've got to join a, a local food co-op. I've got to be car become part of an agricultural program. Uh, I've got to see what my spiritual goals are. By all means, you know, as a Christian, I would encourage you to know God and know Christ, and that can make a huge difference. But let me tell you, to beat diabetes after praying to God about it, hop on the highway, cut those carbs, and do some intermittent fasting, maybe do some longer fasting if you're able to, and watch yourself drive down into the land of non-diabetes in a hurry. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.